Hi Cancer, this is your astrology prediction for 2015. Thank you for joining me today, it's really nice to be with you and I'm going to give you a rundown of each of the months and give you an idea of what you'll be working with. You start January a full blast and the focus for you is going to be very much on relationships. Specifically, relationships and how those become family relationships. So you're looking at solidifying the connections you have with people in your life at this time of the year. You're also looking at um, possibly strengthening some of your working relationships and seeing how they can benefit you. But there's a real focus on how can I bring things together? How can I build more structure in my life with the people that are around me? In February, there's some news that you get from the outside. It could be that you get a message about um, something from abroad, like a letter. I mean, this is an extreme example, but it could be that you get a child who was given up for adoption. There's a real potential for that person to get in touch with you in February 2015. It's long lost causes that have been given up on or dreams that have really just disappeared a long, long time ago. They make a reappearance in your life and there's a recurrence of those and the questions they ask you about you. What does this communication, what does this information say about you. So for instance, if that child comes back after 20 years, what questions are you going to have to ask yourself? And it could be any example, but really the theme's the same. Information causes you to question who you are as a person and how you're going about your life. So it's quite introspective in February and really makes you ask the kind of bigger, larger questions. In March, don't go on a trip in March or February. Stay at home, kind of uh, focus on your financial kind of life. There's real potential for you to make a lot of money and to really improve your physical circumstances, but there's a lot of potential for uh, problems on trips. Going abroad, going on holiday, it could be a problem. And there's also a lot of positive energy in your working life. So February and March, really, really focus on what it is you want to create at work. Start a new project. If you're an artist, start the masterpiece. That's going to take you a couple of months. But really um, focus on what it is you want to create rather than going out into the world and exploring. It's not the time to do that. April sees you putting some of those working things in place and having some success with those. Really conceiving new ideas, creating new projects, creating new work, creating new kind of masterpieces, new insights into your life. And again, the money sector is still with you. Really, really good for you financially, March and April. A lot of growth in that sector. Continue not to go traveling. And really, I would say for most of the year, I would, I mean, I know this is a quite a significant message, Cancer, but I would really not make this your year to go on that world cruise. You know, if you've been thinking of spending three months at sea and looking at what it is you, just taking that time off, I would delay that because Chiron is in your ninth house of exploration and travel. Neptune is there as well, fuzzy, kind of uncertainty, I would avoid that this year. And I would really focus on the concrete side of your life. What is it that you can create? What impact can you have on your life? And what practical changes can you make? May is wonderful because you actually put these things into practice now. You have had the idea at the beginning of the year, so winter and spring, kind of looked around. You realize what your hopes and dreams were, what you wanted to achieve in a practical sense. You start to do that now, but there's also a real kind of spiritual connection. And it's not like you're doing things by yourself. You know, often we can get derailed sometimes. And sometimes something can feel really, really important and you go along with it. And then six months later, a year later, you think, what was I doing? I was so into it and it has no value to me at all. It's a wasted year. And that doesn't happen to you this year because you are taking guided action. You are taking 
spiritually informed action and it's not what am I doing with my life what am I doing with 2015 it's what are we doing with 2015 how can we shape our lives and when I say we it's source it's the universe it's God it's spirit it's higher power whatever you want to call it but it's that greater sense of purpose not just I'm going to Ikea to buy a bed on Tuesday but what am I doing with my life you know, it's looking from short term to long term and seeing how you can create things. That continues in um, June, but now in June there's a real question. And there's a real question of what is your, what is your life? How is your life structured? Why is it the way it is? Who is it that you love? Who are the people that you want to have in your life and who are the people you don't want to have in your life? What is it that you love and what's worth it and what isn't it what isn't worth it? It's really the big questions, you know. And this May and June are really very very introspective months for you where you're really asking big question big questions that will have a huge impact on your relationships by the time July comes around that will really make you sensitive to who you are as a person and how you see yourself and how you see your family and where you want it to go. Okay, I mean Cancer, you're very focused on other people's relationships anyway, but things come to a head in 2015 where you're going to have to make some concrete decisions. If you've been with a partner for five years who's consistently um, not done anything about their alcoholism and who continues to make promises and who you love very dearly but you can see there are no changes and there are no kind of inroads being made ask yourself the question I love this person this person hurts me is this worth it am I committed am I not committed and no one's going to tell you what the answer is but those are the kind of themes that really come together and really force you to to ask those questions now August and September those two months of the summer particularly are wonderful for you really really wonderful and I really w do say this having looked at these signs cancer that you are the sign of the zodiac who's going to have the best month financially best two months in August and September of 2015 there's real scope for you to make a lot of money to have a lot of success in the summer months so if you're a screenwriter, get that blockbuster into the studio so they can publish it. You know, that's at the top end of the scale. But if you're, um, you know, a sole business or a person who's self-employed, make those pamphlets or write that um, workshop or those lessons and then put them on because you will have a lot of success in the summertime. And not just success in a social way, but in a, in a financial way as well. September that continues and the more unique it is the better it will be for you so don't say oh, everyone else is doing lessons on crystal healing so I will do lessons on crystal healing don't do that if you're interested in you know channeling alien number five from Andromeda galaxy then if that's your reality and your truth then please do that no matter how far out and weird it may seem to other people okay that shift, fo that that focus continues into October. But now, in October, something impedes your the way you communicate. So it could be that even if you stay home or even if you do go traveling, that the main problem or the main kind of issue now um, you're going to have to deal with. So it could be that a relative or something, and um, you know, I don't know a volcano in Iceland erupts again and they can't get home and you have to then communicate and deal with it to get them home or it could be that you're out there yourself and you have problems doing that that's the theme some sort of issue with another person in terms of traveling and then you have to spend a lot of time talking through it and getting it sorted out okay November is really a good time for you now to focus on romance and it's really the first time this year that I see major good potential for romance for you in 2015. So you know some years are very romantic this year for you is very financially um, conducive and also very conducive in terms of the communication this month is good for romance and also to again write and to be communicative and to um, 
yeah, either communicate with people on a one-to-one -one basis, face-to-face, -face, or to actually write something down and then to bring it out into the world and take it to people in a more abstract way. And then finally, you end the year with really some major changes to your daily routine and your daily life and really realizing some dreams, um, healing hurts from the past. And if you're single, then I really see that by the time November, December comes around, there's real possibility for you to enter a long-term solid relationship and if you're married or if you're already in a long-term partnership to really heal some of those past issues to really start to work together again to be on the same page and to um, start to have a dream as a couple rather than as a single individual really good so that's what I see for you in 2005 cancer it looks like a very um, productive and very um, insightful year for you if you'd like a personal reading so this is for cancer but if you'd like a reading specifically for your um, natal chart which will make it more specific to you really and narrow it down even further then please get in touch via my website it's gregoryscott.com you can send me an email the address is readings at gregoryscott.co.uk and please remember to subscribe to this channel for future updates have a wonderful 2015 and I will speak to you soon